Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I'm finishing up my series on JSA Call with advanced tips and tricks. This is part two, and I'm going over macros and frequency switching, which is something on the frequency switching. Um, if you're in a persistent mode, I'm finding that it's uh, something that's really of value to you, and I'll get into what it's all about later. But if you're asking and requesting my handouts, I love sending them to you. Really, I do. But please support the channel by hitting the like and the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. So I'm going to go over what are macros, pull versus push messages, how they work, when to use them, a frequency schedule, which is the switching, as well as a, get into a demo and you can see how I create and uh, use some of these macros. So if you pull up the manual currently today, which I did, it was, for me, at least it was not intuitive. And I asked several other people and they had the same issue. So sometimes you see like, you know, you put the call sign in or with the brackets, you know, it's a command function. In some cases it's not needed. And that's why I got a little bit confused. I just started playing around and said, what happens if I don't select it? And I do it a different way. So I'm going to show you some of my way and insights on using the macros. And hopefully if you found some cool ways uh, and some cool macros you use all the time, put them in the comments below. So uh, the call sign selected already is one way of doing it, but you don't even have to select a call sign. You can create a macro without having to do that, and I'll show you. So there are multiple ways to do this. The question is, why would you want to use a macro? Well, it's a shortcut tool. And what I found is that, for example, um, when I'm doing a set of commands that I can I can do to do a given task over and over again, that's to me has been repetitive and uh, it may be also unique. It's not often used. For example, uh, time delta, you don't use that or hearing, maybe you don't use that function that much. But those are the ones that I do like to have in a macro because I do use them, but maybe not so often. Um, but here's the thing. There are multiple choice options <clears throat> with the same message on how you want to do this. It's this question of what is faster and simpler and easier to use. And here's the way I look at this. If I can keep my hand on the mouse, not have to pull it off, go to the keyboard, back to the mouse, go to the keyboard, back to the mouse. If I can just in the beginning, just keep everything on the mouse and just do a couple clicks, I think it's a lot faster than actually having to go in and do some typing. So I think it's a great way of doing it. So where are you going to go? You're going to go to the saved messaging. So if you go under saved messaging up at the top here, so you got general radio, so you should see this. This is what where uh, the area is you edit and create your macros. And so you basically create it by typing it in the line, hit the add button, and off you go. Now, I like spaces between things. So if you want to put a space in, once you click in, you know, add, or you can actually go type this in, Enter is the same thing as hitting add. So I type in the command I want, the mess, you know, the, the macro I want, and then I hit enter, enter twice, and it creates a, uh, a space. So once I did mobile, I hit enter, enter, and down it came in, <clears throat> created a space for me, and I, I can do that. Or just add a space, and it'll do it. What you're going to find, though, is you're going to have to drag and drop and pull it up. So essentially, there's an edit function in here. If I take any message and I double click it, first I highlight it and I double click it, it's gonna be a blue highlight. I can edit the line here. It won't show up here, it'll stay in here. And just, you know, for you know, full disclosure on it, it when you type in, it's not gonna do the automatic caps as it does up here. It will do the lower case down in here. So you can either hit the caps uh, button or I'm pretty sure if you if you leave it alone, it it will once it goes over to JS8, it doesn't matter. It's going to put it in caps anyhow. But just a little uh, unusual thing. I thought it would stay in caps. But anyhow, if this is a simple way. So see these. I can take this. I can drag this, and I'll show this in the demo. I can take this line delta time delta, and drag it and drop it here. And it, so again, highlight the line, drag and drop the move, and it's pretty simple. All deleting messages. Highlight it, hit the delete my, the delete button on it. Uh, and you can't do multiple uh, selection of messages. You have to do them one at a time. Now, I have handouts 
Uh, again, kw3kw at mail.com. Just make sure you say the JS8 macros. I have a lot of people that just say, hey, I saw your video, send me the handout. Well, I've got so many handouts, I have no idea. So <clears throat> uh, JS8 macros. And if you're going to ask for it, please hit the like and the subscribe button. Again, I appreciate that. And so will the others who will find the station a little easier. So make sure you understand when you're thinking of macros, you can pull it from another station or group or push it to another station or group, the information. But you can't do it if you don't have these enabled. So you want to make sure that you have enabled auto reply up here under your speed where you put, you remember you do normal, fast, turbo, whatever you want or slow. Uh, down here, make sure that's enabled, but you also have to go under settings, down where it says station behavior, network auto reply, turn auto reply on at startup. This is a failure point. A lot of people get some of it working some of the time and not all of the time. It's because you don't have this checked. So remember, we all should know that when you see a question mark, that means I'm going to pull information. And there's multiple commands that are out there. Um, so for example, you select a call sign, which maybe you have mine, you hit the, the uh, hearing question mark, uh, which is uh, in one of the drop downs or in one of the macros. Uh, it's going to give you the last four call sign specific. Now, this is a really nice tool using this when I'm trying to find out who I can relay through to get to somebody else. So again, these macros are really neat. But remember, there's multiple ways to do this. So if I'm trying to pull information, for example, um, I can actually just go, you know, I, I select the call sign. Uh, I go directed to, this was in the last video at the bottom. And once I hit the directed to button with a selected call sign, and then I can choose, I can pull their SNR, their info, their grid, their status in here. Um, again, I can ask again, I can, uh, did, did you receive my last transmission? This is all in here. So when a question mark, that's a pull. But uh, when do you want to use macros? And it's when a, a, a call sign is not listed in your call activity column to the right. And that's when you start to go to the uh, uh, used macro list. So option one, which I told you in the last video is, without a macro, is let's say uh, someone here, for example, um, Clark KC1OSC is not showing up in the list here, or Brian isn't, for example. Here's another one. They're not showing. They, I, every morning we're, we're connected. And so I have to right mouse click, uh, type it in, hit OK. Uh, you know, remember to add new station or group. I can put that in and off I go. Versus a macro, this is already built in. I can just immediately in the morning put on an SNR. If he's on, I'm going to get an SNR report right away without doing anything else. So it's much faster just to, to go to the macro and hit that versus adding a call sign in on the, on the call activity list. Now, when we talk about the, the push function in here, there are macros already built in. Uh, you have your heartbeat, your CQ, your reply, your SNR, your info, and your status. And th this, as I call it, is uh, static information that once you fill it in here, and again, this is under uh, general station, and I'm putting in here my messages, I edit it to what I want. This is static, and every time I hit that button, it's going to go out. But what happens if I want to take this, for example, home, and I want to say uh, until 10 o'clock today, and the next day it's until uh, 11 o'clock or whatever, and I want to make changes, but I want to keep this uh, uh, set, but I only want to add the changes when necessary. I'll show you how to do that when I do the demo. But this right now, when you push this, it's only going to put the static data that comes from this field. So my standard heartbeat, when I hit heartbeat here, is showing your grid square. Now, when I do heartbeat, I, I now don't do it here. I do it in a macro, and I add, for example, and when I want to, when I want to use the macro, uh, is this, MJ, Raleigh, North Carolina. But if you notice in here on, on, the, uh, on the heartbeat, you don't, there is nothing that you can change. This is automatically your grid square, Right here, this is always standard. To add this is where the macro comes in. And again, I'll show you all of that. So CQ comes from the settings. You can see that. Reply message. Oh, by the way, on the reply message in the last video, I said you can pull it. You can't. It's a push only. I apologize for, for that misunderstanding. Again, SNR, you know, uh, status of your station status, all this stuff you can easily uh, push out. 
So when do you want to use the, these macros? Uh, when you want to go beyond the standard message and add additional information. So again, all in here, what you see is the static. I want to add to it. More than just home, I want to say home until a specific time, and that's going to fluctuate every day. Frequency switching. If you're persistent, or even, you know, for let's say for five, six hours, but for me in, in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, I know the 40 meters is great in the morning up till about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and then I want to switch over to 20 meters. And I leave my, my rig on, as many of us are doing on GSA calls, for others to practice, play with, to leave messages. Or if you belong to a group, people do want to stay in contact and drop messages into your inbox, uh, pull information out of your status uh, reports, etc. So the switching is a great tool without you having to be sitting at your rig making a, a manual switch. So these are program times to switch. It's very, very simple. So if I want to go to different frequencies, um, or different bands, just check the box that you see in there, right there. And uh, for, for example, I'm going to do 20 meters midday. I just now, I right mouse click in here, hit insert. So I just go down here, just like you're doing a frequency. But you have to check this first. Insert, frequency, there, your time switch, any description, hit OK, and it populates it in there. So I go 40 meters to 20 meters, back to 40 meters, and it automatically switches. Now, the question is going to be, what happens if you want to stay on longer and you don't want to switch? The thing is, it gives you a warning. It says it's going to switch in 20 seconds. And you just say, uh, no, cancel, and I want to stay on this. So you can override it. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to switch on you unless you ignore the command. And so very, very simple to do. Okay, on the demo, the first thing I want to show you is go up to the top, click, click on your call sign, network auto reply under general station behavior, and make sure turn on auto reply at, at uh, startup. Okay. Next, you're going to go up to up here above the tune, your speed, where you normally adjust your speed, and make sure uh, enable auto reply is checked. Once you have that done, you're ready to go. So when we, um, first thing I always like to do also is, and I've mentioned this in my advanced tips and tricks part one, is I go to my time sync network and I can notice I'm one millisecond, that's great. Uh, every morning I get up, I'm finding, a, like, you know, I'm uh, close to half a second off or whatever, I can update now. But again, adjust your time settings to make sure that you're, you're synced correctly. So next, I'm going to go to Saved with the drop-down arrow, and I'm going to actually just deselect everyone right now. So Save with the drop-down, Edit, Save Messages. This is where you add and remove and make changes. So let's just I'll remove one here, and I'll add it back in. I selected what I want removed. I go up, hit Delete. Okay, done. So now I'm going to add it back in. I'm going to add Steve back in. So that's K-E-2-K-N space. S N R question mark. And then I can hit add, it'll add it in, it'll go down to the bottom. But I'm going to show you if I hit enter, enter. So if I go enter, enter, I create an extra space in here. And all of these things can be moved. So if I wanted to put a, a space between some of these things, I can put that in, or I can just take that and delete it. I can take Steve's, grab it, and I'm going to put Steve right up there with Clark. If I wanted to make a change, for example, let's say um, uh, SNR here, if I, let's say that wasn't entered, I'm going to double uh, highlight it, double click. Now I can go in, and for example, if I have one too many spaces, I can go ahead and remove that space, hit OK, and done. So that's a simply, you know, uh, how you can uh, uh, create macros edit and move macros within it. And the handouts tell you exactly all the commands, all the different ones to, to go into. I'm not going to get into that. So let's do a, a macro, for example. So let's say, for example, this fake group I made up, North Carolina MCOM, I have it highlighted. I can go in and, for example, I can um, put out hearing, uh, or let's see in here, I'm going, going to uh, push out, uh, let them, everybody know that I'm at Radnar, park today doing a mobile. So everyone in the group, they can find out what my status is. You can see it. It's actually going through it. There's nobody in the group, but I'll just hit halt. Now, if I don't have someone selected, 
Uh, typically, you have to right mouse click. You have to go to um, add new station or group. I have to type in, for example, Clark, uh, KC1OSZ. You don't have to do any of that if you have a macro. Since he's not showing up in here, I'm just simply going to go here, click it on. I'm going to go to Clark, SNR, and done. So <clears throat> see the advantages of if someone's not in here and people you talk to all the time, it's a repetitive task. He's on every day and automatically he's going to go out. And again, he's not on. Um, and it's going to perform the, the macro. Uh, another one is if, let's say I had uh, this individual, let's see who has a large offset. Okay, 800 or 899. So this individual has an 899 time delta. If I go under saved, you can see my time delta. Now it's automatically populated it. So if I hit this, I'm pushing back to that individual, letting them know his time delta is 899. And we'll go ahead and just, you know, put, push that out there. So uh, essentially, that's a really, really uh, quick way of doing it versus having to go in and say, hey, AD, 8MM, your time delta is the following. And when you're working with people in your group and they're not aware that their time delta is off, it's a great tool to use. Again, the advantage of knowing what macros to use and when. And you're going to get more familiar with this as you go in. And if you have great suggestions, put them in the comments below. So that's done. So let's say um, another one we can put in here if we go to saved. Since I already have somebody selected, I can give them an update. And here again, remember, traveling is the part that was static in the screen I showed you earlier. I'm adding Radnor Park, uh, uh, Tennessee, POTA. And so this is great when you know you have common places that you go or things that you do just to add it in addition to it. And I got an acknowledgement coming back in. Let's get out of here. And so he got, he got my uh, time delta and comes back an acknowledgement. And we should see it right in here. And I'm at 09. Okay. <clears throat> so all good on that one. Uh, let's see here. There was one other thing. Oh, uh, doing a heartbeat. If I did a heartbeat, notice it just shows the FM05. I'm going to hit stop here because I don't want that to go out. But if I go to saved, and this is the macro, that's the part that's always fixed. I added MJ Raleigh, North Carolina. And you see it right in here? MJ Raleigh, North Carolina. <clears throat> now I'm sending out a macro with more information. And why did I do that? I tend to find people who uh, have a heartbeat, or for me, even putting this out, if they're saying, hey, I need to, to you know, talk to somebody over on the, uh, the southeast or the you know, mid-Atlantic mid, uh, mid area, <clears throat> they have the information without trying to find out who is KW3KW. A little bit more information sometimes helps them better trying to get a QSO going. Um, by the way, <clears throat> when you're doing this and practicing this, go ahead and leave a message for me in my inbox and let me know if, uh, in JSA call, if this is actually helping you. Uh, more than the comments, I want to challenge you. Drop a message. I'll, I'll try to be on 7.078 in the mornings, okay, uh, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, be from, let's say, 7.30 to 9.30 uh, at a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern yeah, it's Daylight Savings Time, whatever it is. But anyhow, just try that and put, leave me some messages. I'd love to reply back to you. So let's wrap up with a summary and uh, get back and close this thing out. So what are the key takeaways? Make sure you enable auto-reply in those two areas. I find the one that is done under the Settings tab is missed, and people can't figure out why they can't have information automatically retransmitted back to somebody else. Uh, push versus pull, uh, you know, pulling information is from others, pushing information to others at the right time, and that you can do it both in a, a static way, what you see down in here, or more in a dynamic messaging, is when you start to add the macros. And so you're taking a heartbeat and you're adding additional information, but you're sending it not through the button, but through the macro. And now you can take that same um, message that's going out and make it different, better, improved or more noticeable for others with more information. Frequency switching is great when you go into a persistent state and 
Uh, you want to take advantage of when the, one band uh, closes and the other band opens without having to be at your rig. Uh, it's, a, it's a great tool that I now use uh, on a regular basis. Uh, leave your rig on for others. That's what I try to do as much as I can so that others can uh, find out who's out there and uh, drop me messages in my inbox, uh, do an SNR reading, uh, relay off of me, whatever. And don't forget to ask for the handouts at kw3kw at mail.com. And again, this is MJ with Ham Radio Made Simple, kw3kw, saying thank you for hitting the like and the subscribe button and the great comments and your support. Until the next video, out.